looking forward to talking to you. It's, it's really, I'm glad we were able to put this together on thank a you rainy Lord. Friday. I thank you for coming in. And uh, looking forward to learning, and uh, bear with me. I'm going to be learning a lot, and uh, it's good to see you again. Yeah, yeah, the same. Welcome, welcome very much to Conversations, where it's a pleasure to welcome to the program Dr. Uh, Bayrod Na Nakai, and he's a, a nuclear engineer, and he's got a very interesting story to tell, and we're going to be investigating that and some of his thoughts about... Uh, I don't know, the nuclear industry, the place of that within the energy pattern of the world and other matters. And uh, Bayrod, welcome very, very much to Conversations Manhattan Network. Well, you're all welcome. Glad to be here. We met at a, a meeting where Mr. Topping was there at the same time, up at Columbia and so forth, and uh, had a talk. And a, a very interesting, you are a nuclear scientist. You're Iranian. Yes. An interesting combination. And I wonder if you could, please, because we have a full 58 minutes now, could you share some of your background, your own, you know, your, where you were born and raised, some of your education, and then maybe we could talk about the energy industry writ large, particularly as it relates to Iran, and particularly nuclear energy within that energy pattern. But could you share your own personal background, sure. please? I was born and raised in Tehran, mm -hmm. Iran. Then after finishing high school, I came to the United States, went to the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. to study nuclear engineering. I received my bachelor's, my master, and my PhD from University of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a while after that, during my PhD period, I worked at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, right before finishing, around the time that I was finishing, and ready to go back home, mm -hmm. uh, the revolution started. 79, huh? 79. Big event. Yeah. Big event. Had you studied science before you came to Tennessee or at university? Well, uh, the had you no. done undergraduate no. work there or no? No, I high did high, uh, only high school. You know, I did all my education, the bachelor, master's, and PhD at University of Tennessee. I see. And, and, uh, and in, in Tehran, or in Iran, the educational system is one, is it uh, a unique system? Were, did you, were you marked, were you, d in here we have high school, younger students, mm -hmm. they, some will be marked, it's a college preparatory. They're going to get ready to go to university. Mm -hmm. Other people will learn trades or something. Is it that way, and were you marked for a university? No, I finished a high school uh, in science. In science? In science, uh -huh. mathematics and science. Mm -hmm. One of the prerequisites of me coming to the United States for my father was that I get the exam for entrance to the university mm -hmm. in Tehran. Uh, as you know, in most places other than the United States, there is an entrance examination to the university. Most places, it's very, very few go to university. Well, uh, I think. not only very few go, but there, uh, there are more applicant than there are room at the university. Yeah. So there is an examination mm -hmm. for the entrance to the university. Uh -huh. And there are several disciplines that it's very hard to get in. Mm -hmm. So my father insisted that I have to pass that exam before the Tehran University? at Toronto University uh -huh. before I can come Go to the United States. I see. So I studied hard for that. Unfortunately, I did pass it for two different departments. Which department? Uh, f one was physics. The other one was economics. Oh, physics and economics? Yes. You should be king of the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, then after yeah. that, I came to... Tennessee, uh -huh. and I started a bachelor's degree in nuclear engineering. Uh huh. And you you began at the uh, freshman level. You would have at been the 20 level. years old, 18, 20 about years old. About 19. 19, and you began, and then you lived in Tennessee. And I lived in Tennessee, and uh, and what I, I don't that would have been what year? I, it, I came to the United States on for. March 14, 1966. March 14th is Albert Einstein's birthday. Did you know that? Uh, I didn't know that. It's also my birthday. Uh -huh. That's how I happened to know. <laughs> there was a movement. They were going to make March 14th a national holiday. I was all for it, but <laughs> it was to celebrate that great man. Yeah, but, yeah. okay. 
And what year again? I'm sorry, Miss. 1966. 66. So uh, okay, and you were here. You, did you do you remember your coming? Was it a interesting? Had you been to the United States before? No, I haven't been there. But my older brothers were in Tennessee, so that's why naturally I came there. And that's why you went to Tennessee. Probably. That is what. That is. And were they academically uh, involved? Uh, uh, they were yes. They uh -huh. were studying there also. Uh huh. And did you know from the beginning, at the, uh, undergraduate, that you wanted to head to become a nuclear scientist? Or were you I'd already more? made up my mind uh, you in high to go school that, way. that I wanted to go to nuclear engineering. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'd already made up my mind that that is the way I want to go. Uh huh. So. So you did. You studied hard. Yeah, I did a study there, uh, and uh, it was very interesting area. Mm -hmm. There were m surprising. There were many. Uh, other students, big classes, mm -hmm. uh, but right at the time that I was graduating, these classes started to shrink. Hmm. Why? Uh, because all the anti-nuke movement mm -hmm. was there, and then we also had the uh, Three Mile Island. Yes, right. So the building of new nuclear power plant mm -hmm. all of a sudden stopped. I remember well, there was a Dixie Lee Ray. Dixie Lee Ray, that she was. She was uh, in uh, there, and there was that kind of thing. I remember doing a program with mm -hmm. her way back when, and she was telling me that as far as nuclear power is concerned, uh, the use of nuclear, you know, the, uh, to make power, that it was had the safest record of any industry in the history of the industrialization still process. Has. Still not has. Only any and you told me on the telephone the other day that there had never been, if I'm not mistaken, set me straight because you're aware of it, there had never been with a power plant, nuclear power plant, fission nuclear power plant, a single that was just strictly a nuclear power plant, there had never been a human loss of life except somebody falling off a ladder or something. Uh, directly associated with it. In Tremont Island, it didn't hurt anybody. Uh -huh. uh, ironically, Three Mile Island was the best test that tell you that is a safe industry. Uh, how is that? Because it's thought uh, of as Because a uh, almost all the kinds of error that you could have made was made there. That's true. But it survived without any meltdown. Uh, meltdown or without any damage outside. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. since Three Mile Island, the changes, the procedures, the additions, the modification have been monumental. Uh, have they? Uh, mm -hmm. They have. So mm -hmm. if the reactors, nuclear power plant reactors, mm -hmm. were safe then, they are 100% more safer now. Huh. That's interesting, and yet there was, I've also talked with her, it's very interesting to me, I'm not sure if you're familiar with James Lovelock, by any chance, the Gaia, he's the gentleman, he's a environmentally minded person who a great number of people ascribe to, he's mm -hmm. an older man, but he's got this notion of the earth as an organism and mm -hmm. very ecologically tuned and everything, and he has just recently, some of the people in the audience might be surprised, He's just recently come out in support of, of nuclear power, energy think. as a power source for non-polluting of the environment. We're going to be able to talk about waste mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. We have those problems, but he's come out in support of that too. But the utility industries are very inordinately open to public scrutiny and public input so that a if there is such a thing as a misinformed public about the safety of it, they would have an inordinate ability to affect new uh, utility industries, and they were able to put a stop to it because it's associated with the radioactive destruction of the atomic weapons and so forth, and that there's a mismatch in the consciousness of people, and I, I would presume perhaps you think that or not. I'm well, sure what I think is that... There is the waste disposal problem. Uh, well, yeah. uh, there is. Uh, there is a waste disposal problem because, and that is part of the bigger picture of energy policy. Okay. Uh, the idea right now, the fuel that comes out of the reactor, spent fuel, mm -hmm. are stored on site. Mm -hmm. Because 
the promise that the government gave to the nuclear industry mm -hmm. to find a permanent repository for them. Didn't they find Yucca or something? Yucca Mountain, and that has not finalized yet, and Is they are still in uh, uh, transit. Where are we going to put all this stuff? Huh? Uh, the, the idea is that they put it there and some people object to putting it there. Some studies say that it's a safe place and it's as safe as any place that you might think of. Mm -hmm. But still, it comes... You have to transport it to there. You have to transport it there, which is not a big deal. Well, I you say it's not a big deal, but they say we're going to transport radioactive waste material that's destructive of genetics or something uh, through the, then we're going to have a, uh, these kind of <laughs> scenarios can be put forth effectively by concerned citizens who relate to the, uh, and there's a fear of atomic energy because of the con uh, association with the bomb and the atomic mm -hmm. weaponry. And that's the question, the difference between atomic energy for power purposes and uh, for weaponry. And so, and then they, the public has an inordinate ability to affect things by uh, organizing around mm -hmm. an issue. And it's also people who are against technology in general can come to focus on that. Well, uh, first of all, the transport of the fuel will not be in grocery paper bags. It will not what? In the grocery paper bags, to be afraid that it might spill over. They grocery are, paper bags? Yeah, they won't uh, transport the oh, fuel no, in no, grocery no. paper bags. Yeah. Oh. So it's overboard. They are special enclosure that they make. Mm -hmm. And those enclosures go through great design, scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, they put them out. and. Uh, fire missile at them mm -hmm. to see that how they stand. Mm -hmm. And they would put the, those fuel on that caravan goes. And definitely it will be uh, escorted by uh, security. Mm -hmm. So it's overblown. You say, OK. It, it's uh, by far overblown. I think that. But it can be marshaled effectively a, a, by concerned people more so than other aspects of the ability of the people to affect policy. Yeah, but I think that uh, if it's scored by proper security, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. most probably government will have a hand. Oh, sure. Then uh, that would be the least to worry about. What would be the most to worry about? In a, and, and maybe we should share, because Atomic, I think in France is something like 40% of the, the in energy In France, in Japan, in Europe, and right now France... Uh, it's just uh, past a fusion the fu fusion to build there. The, we have to look yes. at the general energy term. Okay. It is true there are plenty of energy in fossil fuel, mm -hmm. oil and gas around. Mm -hmm. These fuel have been generated after thousands hundred thousand and millions of years. Mm -hmm. We are using them as if there is no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Number two. China is coming along too. The China, yeah. which is a and India. giant. Yeah. China and India mm -hmm. by themselves in few years will be using close to half of energy mm. available. Of the, of the uh, 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 okay. entire world. Okay. Uh -huh. But there is also a point that there are so much oil and gas that can be found. And there's so much of that that you can extract. You mean only so much? Only so much. It gets to a point that you reach the peak. Beyond there, whatever you do, you are depleting down. is now more fine. But more important than that is your ability to extract that oil, process it, and bring it to the market. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are close to max. Uh, uh, don't we find new reserves? Doesn't all the matter. Time? No, you can no. find the reserve, yes. but uh -huh. there is also ability to extract that, process it, transport it, and bring it to the market. Mm -hmm. That is almost to the max right now. Is it really? You mean, okay. Uh, for example, well, how right now. How can it now? be to the max if we have a growing market for energy in China and other places, 
there's going to be a demand for energy. There must be plans to be able to meet that demand and so forth of uh, how can well, it be well, a Look demand? at it that uh, you're hungry, mm -hmm. you go to a restaurant, mm -hmm. you can get as much food as you can in your hands. Yeah. Okay. You're hungry, you need the food, yeah. and the food is there, mm -hmm. but your hand has so much capability. Uh -huh. The capability mm -hmm. of transforming that energy from the ground mm -hmm. to the consumer is limited. For example, right yeah. now, there are plenty of crude available. The reason that the gas is going up is because the refineries are operating at the max. Why don't they make more refineries then? Well, the idea is to make more f refinery. It needs capital investment. Yes, yes. And then the thought is always according to economic model. Uh -huh how to maximize that, and nobody wants right now to put that uh, risk factor in, uh -huh. to risk building. If you mean you're new refinery if capacity refinery. because? But can't they see a market that's going to well, be Well, uh, they are unsure, the number, of the, number one, unsure of the market. Number two, by the time that comes in line, it's going to be a few years from now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, the same happened, this is United States. Mm -hmm. How about other places? Yeah. The same problem exists there. And then assume that you put more refinery, you get more energy out. Mm -hmm. At the same rate, you are polluting more. Yes, that's true. We do have a problem with greenhouse gases, despite uh, what uh, some uh, people uh, might uh, say we don't. We be do. Beside the greenhouse uh -huh. gases, the pollution in the air itself. Uh -huh. There are cities that the level of pollution in the air is beyond safe uh -huh. limit. That means they are at the poison level. I think there are places in China like that. There are uh -huh. many places. Uh -huh. Beijing is like that on, a on quite a number uh, of some. occasions. So yeah. the idea that there comes. And then, if you remember, 20 years ago, when you didn't have light, mm -hmm. you would turn on a candle, continue the work you were doing. Mm -hmm. Today, when you don't have power, Mm, everything you can't stopped. even get to your house. Yeah. Remember August of 2003 that the power went out? I do remember. I was here. Yeah. You, were uh, yeah. you couldn't do anything. Yeah, we're, we're totally connected to electricity. You are, yeah. Your phone is on yeah. electricity. Mm -hmm. Your gas is on electricity. We had a flashlight in the drawer, I think. Wasn't you it? had a flashlight yeah, in the yeah. drawer. But, but that wears out. We wears out. Mm. And we don't have any tallow candles or no kerosene lamps anymore. Yeah, even if yeah. you have those, yeah. you have to get into your house. Yeah, that's right. How do you get to your house? You have to drive. In the car drive, you get you there. But many houses, particularly in New York, yeah. are locked, and you have to dial in to get in. That's Without right. electricity, you cannot get in. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That is why in August 2003, many people spent the night outside in the street. Yeah, for, yeah right. Yeah. Good it was August rather than December. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're looking at it, is energy has it's become an essential I mean, part yeah. Exactly. of life. That's why it's part of a utility industry, which also, again, has a great deal of public scrutiny because it is a utility rather that than some correct. venture new thing, and that's appropriate. That is appropriate. Because the public is so dependent upon it, they want oversight and, con and uh, input to uh, decisions that affect it. And it could be the decisions by a population not well informed could be working against what the possibilities for a, a progressive use of energy might well be. That's correct. I think so, don't you? Yeah. Uh -huh. And Big then question. you Big are also s saying that in third world nations and emerging nations, mm -hmm. the rate of energy use is around 10% of the Europe and West and United States. Likely to grow. And that is likely to grow. That demands more energy. Mm -hmm. And the idea comes that where are you going to find energy to supply all the people? Uh -huh. There is no source of energy that should be eliminated. No, no source should be elimin eliminated. Yeah. So we have to look at it. There are some, for example, solar is great, mm -hmm. but I never want to be on a surgery bed connected to a solar when they're doing surgery on me. 
Not, not, not under the current situation. No. They may get it more dependable. Doesn't matter. The yes, they may. The sun might go behind a cloud. Uh, so uh, the but, idea but is they, all they can get. They can improve. But they yeah, can improve yeah, that. Design. But the idea in general is mm. geothermal is good. Yeah. Wind energy is good. Yeah. But also you have to look at it. Where are you going to put? You have to be able to transport those to distribution centers. That's right. You well, know, they could feed it into the grid, I guess. Or you have to feed. Are there grids where you can put this? Right now, there is a disconnect mm -hmm. between the places that you can put mm -hmm. these uh, big solar panels yeah. and the wind uh, generating. And the places that have the demand. And then the grid that you can connect to. Uh -huh. So there is a gap in between. Mm -hmm. That you're talking in the United States, world, or what? In general, most of yeah. places. Uh -huh. If you talk, if mm -hmm. that problem exists in the United States, mm -hmm. it exists in other places much, much uh, more, acute. uh, more acutely. Uh -huh. Then you're looking at in all places like China, India, mm -hmm. Pakistan, Bangladesh, Iran, and many of these countries, mm -hmm. the energy demand is going up. Mm -hmm. I sent you an email yeah. that the energy demand during the last uh, Yes, it was very interesting. It uh, has increased. And you sent me that thing on the international oil industry that was really complex and the statistics there were about the energy industry. There are people who are studying this with a fine-tuned fine magnifying glass and getting it really down, yeah. So the idea is that your system uses oil to run. And then oil becomes a political tool and a tool that people would fight for it. I've noticed. Seems to be characteristic of the contemporary moment. That would seem to me. So and all of this is because of lack of comprehensive and acceptable energy policy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The only solution that exists right now that is dependable is nuclear power. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lovelock's coming out in agreement with that. Statement. And Many of the ecology-minded people want to have it done by natural systems rather than some people have a distrust of technology in general, uh, natural, solar, and so forth. But it's a little hard to see sufficient amounts, or we don't have the battery technology or so. We can't use just geothermal or solar or wind and these kind of things you in your use or all tidal. Of them. Use them all, you have to use but that's going to be them. insufficient in your that view is to meet the need. All of those will be insufficient in terms of the need. Mm -hmm. Nuclear power should be promoted, mm -hmm. and I think... Rather than fought, in your view. That is correct. Uh, the as it is now. As it is right now. It in the United States particular. In the United States particular. Mm -hmm. What they should do, uh, my idea that uh, I proposed them during that uh, we talk was yeah. have an office under International Atomic Energy Organization, okay. the auspices of United Nations. Mm -hmm. Because this has international implications. That is. Yeah, not just the United States, right. Any country that wants nuclear power plant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and fuel processing, mm -hmm. this office will help them jointly design, build, and operate and those finance? facilities. Finance? Finance the country does it itself. Yeah. They because it is a huge investment, particularly with the huge safeguards that are insisted. Yeah, right because now. if you put the finance there, every country would want one. Uh -huh. if you but oh, yes, right. So if the country is willing to go the finance part of it, is willing to risk the financial part of uh -huh. it, from technological aspect, yes. this office will help them to design it, uh -huh. build it, and operate it. Mm -hmm. So it will be operating on a joint basis. Joint basis with the Atomic Energy With uh, that office from Atomic Energy. Which also would have oversight to what is being Yeah, used. because they are there. Yeah. If they are joint running the pro uh, program, mm -hmm. you are having oversight there. Do, do they have oversight now, Mr. Uh, Baraday and so forth? Do they have oversight for the atomic industry that generates electricity in the world? Only countries that ha like Iran that have signed NPT. 
NPT non-proliferation non treaty. treaty. I think Mr. Bush is not paying attention to the non-proliferation well, uh, treaty agreements uh, in some way, but that may be another issue. Well, the, the great uh, powers have reduced the importance of NPT mm -hmm. because as part of NPT that all countries signed mm -hmm. was that in good faith the big power reduced the nuclear arms. Mm. They I have ignored that part all the, they have violated that now, part all over. I think they have and they're now talking about tactical nuclear weapons, they are talking about clusters and all sorts of very alarming things at least from my sense. That is correct uh -huh. because it is working against the nuclear energy. If you look at nuclear energy in the context that I propose, mm -hmm. that be built under atom international atomic energy auspices mm -hmm. with the scientists, with an office there, and operated jointly, then you can really look at it, Adam for Peace, second generation. Uh, because second the generation. Sec because Mr. the first Fermi and all that. No, the first one was. Uh, I have a clip. I sent it to you from uh, President Eisenhower uh -huh. in 1953 that he gave an address in the United Nations, uh -huh. Atom for Peace. Yes, I remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that is uh, Atom for Peace revisited. We can. The world can use nuclear power as a source for peace. Non-polluting non-polluting and also if you generate enough energy mm -hmm. then the pressure on oil and going after oil uh -huh. and fighting for oil uh -huh. will be reduced. And you're not going to have to fight for uranium-325 or plutonium or the Because all of those is coming uh, under that office. Yeah, but is the source going to be there? It's in a, uh, to invest in atomic People will bring up Chernobyl, I suppose, when you talk this way. Uh, there were uh, uh, disasters there. We had a movie called China Syndrome. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Yeah, China uh, Syndrome, just a movie, is but it's good fiction. It was fiction. Just fiction. Yeah, but it was based on those fears, and those fears have been used to affect policy. That is correct. Uh -huh. Inappropriately. Uh, in your very view. inappropriately uh -huh. used it. Uh -huh. uh, when you look at about Chernobyl, mm -hmm. Chernobyl was a dual purpose reactor. Dual purpose, share what that means, please. Uh, that means that at the same time it was produced power, mm -hmm. it was also producing fuel for nuclear arms. Was it a breeder reactor? No. No? Uh, it is a reactor that, it, first of all, is graphite cooled reactor. Okay. In the purely commercial nuclear power plants, mm -hmm. that there are 103 of them operating in the United States. Okay. The water cools the system and mm -hmm. moderates. That means reduce the energy of the neutron mm -hmm. to a level that can induce fission. Okay. In graphite, graphite does that, both cools and reduces the power. The problem with gra graphite reactor is that it has a positive temperature coefficient. That means it's like your thermostat. Mm. Your thermostat that reaches a certain temperature mm -hmm. in winter, it turns itself off. Correct. Dep just imagine you have a, tem a thermostat that once it reaches, for example, 70, mm -hmm. it accelerates, put more heat in the house. Yeah, that's not a good idea. That yeah. is the graphite type of reactor. Oh, oh. That if it gets out of your hand, then it becomes a positive moderate coefficient. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. So that yeah. is number two. For running a nuclear power plant, for every aspect, we have procedures. Yes, it's, it's highly, highly it's yeah, form. Yeah, people who work there, they have gone to school uh -huh. at different universities, mm -hmm. and they have learned to do things in a certain process. Mm -hmm. now very disciplined. Very disciplined. Now you are bringing all these people in one place. Mm -hmm. Each is used to a different process. To unify, all of them is fine. Each of those processes that they think is correct. But to run a nuclear power plant, you create a procedure that all of them have to follow that. A protocol. 
a protocol. In another words, it is one, two, three. You go one, two, three, four, and you never miss one, and you never violate those. For each one of them. For every. They don't do that now. There aren't standards that are set by our nuclear regulatory agencies. Beside yet? those, uh -huh. they are standarded, but at the power plant for everything that you do, mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. there is a procedure. Um, now, what about people say, well, you're going to have human error and people are going to get drunk or something, you know, and these well, kind of things will be brought up. Well, number up, one, yeah. you cannot get drunk because you cannot have any alcohol, even a glass of beer, five hours up to five hours prior to you get into a nuclear Not even a little glass of beer? No. You mean if you're working in an atomic facility? That is correct. Uh -huh. If Not even a glass of beer? Not up to five hours before coming there. Oh. You can have it the night before, but you cannot get into it. Mm -hmm. Drugs are absolutely no. You can't go into a nuclear reactor with a lot of pot? Not only you cannot <laughs> go there, because <laughs> after you go there, often yeah. they call you come for random testing. Yeah, right. right and right. you have to be there for yeah. tests. Mm -hmm. And it should not. Could, the, could we not get, if you've got the people, let's say to a degree, um, you, you know, uh, we have a lot of cyber things. We have triple redundancy systems and so forth. I've heard that uh, it would be, I don't know, but it would be uh, the airlines, the American Airlines and that, that they would be more efficient and safer if there were no pilots in the airplane uh, that the human error a man took a plane down because he had fought with his wife or something and you can't account for it and they got triple redundancy systems that would make it safer uh, couldn't they have just a computer triple redundant systems that would be safer and to try to get as much as possible the human emotional possibility of some sort of a breakdown or something happening that could mess things up or guard against that somehow. So theoretically, by that is good. Yeah. So rather than trusting the, the human no, error thing, theoretically the is good. Thing, but like the you don't want the pilot because he, could, he, could, he can blow a cork yes. psychologically. Theoretically, what you say is fine. Oh. But you have a computer doing that. Yeah. Then Triple the redundant. Triple true. redundant. Then you have to have redundant computer to do that for you. Mm -hmm. Then you have to have a backup computer. Mm -hmm. Then you have to have a computer monitor to make sure they are doing your job. Where are you going to stop? I'm not sure whether or not there is, uh, whether we end up with Spock in Star Trek. Mm -hmm. So no the idea is trying that to get emotions out of it, but that, that's a question that may be confronting us more than we We're heading now toward nanotechnology and all kinds of things. They got I don't want to go into Lord Kane no, saying yeah, we're going to face unemployment. We may be able to put people out of work, and computers will be able to do things that no, have they required won't. great numbers of people. Uh, That's a big issue. No, I'm they won't because uh, there is a still a trained human judgment mm -hmm. that is far superior to computer. The idea is that you have the uh, scram button, mm -hmm. that if you feel something is not correct on fusion, you can push that the scram button and shut down the reactor. Uh -huh. You mean a human being? A human being. Uh -huh. If you want to leave that to the computer, it mm. every time it's confused, mm -hmm. it keeps shutting down your reactor. Well, okay, yeah. Uh, 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 okay, well, that's another argument. Uh, that, that is that's another side, argument. That's a side issue. But now you're going to have all kinds of people who are going to jump up in your chair and say, what, we're going to have all this... Uh, uranium and we're going to have all of this uh, radiation being made, electricity, it's going to pollute, it's going to give us cancer, we're going to have downwind cancer from the plants, and, all th and we're going to have meltdowns like China syndrome, well, and Ch all of these kind of things are going to come to the surface, and that public, perhaps not informed in terms of what the realities are, as they could be, has again a strong effect, and it's a place where the public, being utility industry, susceptible to public scrutiny, they have an inordinate ability to affect things where in other aspects of the economy is protected, if that's the right word, from the misunderstanding of the general population of the realities that the experts in that field understand. And so that's a situation that's led to a, uh, a huge investment in atomic energy plants that have had to go undeveloped because of this mass public hysteria and misinformation and understanding about how effective atomic energy can be? Well, also, some blames could go to the industry <coughs> itself that it not connect with the people in detail. Uh, 
in terms to of alleviate some of those concerns. Education. Education. Public uh, well, I don't call it education because education has a, a negative connotation that I know you don't know. Mm -hmm. I want. But a conversation, a, lot a of connection. Education is that way. Yeah. yeah. That's called indoctrination. Indoctrination. Often, yeah. mm. Connect with the people. Mm -hmm. So with that the facts, man. Uh, rather than they see that as a black box that generates energy, mm -hmm. know what it goes, how much safety goes in it, mm -hmm. how much uh, care it, it goes in it, how much training, mm -hmm. how much work it goes mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. then people start to appreciate better. Mm -hmm. So that is the industry's uh, job that it's they It's a PR thing. PR yeah. that they should do better. Mm -hmm. But also... How do they get over that in France, where they have 40% of their electricity uh, well, uh, no, supplied they, by atomic energy? In France, what they did, first of all, they started their power plan from a scientific angle. Mm -hmm an extension of the laboratory work, extension of the scientific work that became more acceptable rather than the utility end of it. Interesting. But it is a utility. It is a government. If I'm not mistaken, 40% of electricity is probably from Probably more. More probably now more in France? Yeah. And they also And export. that's where they have now, interestingly, we don't want to miss it, They've now announced uh, 12 billion or something like that for a fusion, fusion reactor. And, and, I, and you help me. You understand atomic processes. I've always understood fusion as virtually, totally pollution-free. Uh, the solution to energy problems is going to be fusion. It's always been just over the horizon. But I see they've just given that contract to France. Yeah. And is that a major development? Is there a big difference between fusion? And fusion yes, based fusion is energy. the same process that goes in, in the sun. Uh, in the sun. Yes. Uh, what it is that smaller atom fuse, they come together, mm -hmm. and that releases this tremendous energy. Tremendous energy, and it's pollution free in and terms of the waste that we talk with fission. That is correct. So, is this fusion uh, prototype going in? Uh, in uh, France, is that signaling that we've met the problem of being able to utilize fusion as no, a source but of energy? And why? what is that thing going on in France? But to be able to get to fusion reactor, yeah. you need nuclear fusion reactor to provide you the energy to get you there. Yeah, uh, say it again. You need a fusion-based nuclear reactor to get you to you fusion? You need the energy yeah. to get there. Uh -huh. And that energy in France is produced by nuclear power, mm -hmm. fission power plant. It could be produced by uh, by solar power. It could be produced uh, by yeah. Uh, but the, the amount of energy that they need is great, and generally that is one plan. Mm -hmm. If you look at the fusion, it's not going to be. It's still over the viable horizon. for the next thirty years. That's the way n for that long. But it's always been to me, as I've been growing up and so forth, that it's just over the horizon. We're just going to get to fusion, but it's a larger challenge intellectually or design or something than... And what is that that they're doing in France now? That's you see, not they a are prototype. building a prototype. Mm -hmm. they, when you want to build a system, yeah. one is feasibility that such a thing uh, could happen. Yeah. The second one is, can I sustain? In other words, when you need to build a power plant, uh -huh. you must be able to produce that continuously operated. Yeah, you want to be able to uh, project it. Yeah, yeah, but then you're going to have technological developments that are going to make As things possible. We're and that is, the the yeah. and that yeah. is what they're doing. And that is what they're doing to the fusion. It's an fusion. experiment then, right? Huh? It is experimental. Uh -huh. That is they're building and trying as a model to build to see that if that would become a viable source of energy. And maybe lead down a course that would be able to, to go. That if, we, if we were able to harness that, then we would have the energy problem licked. Uh, probably that would be 30 years or so. Well, 30 years. So for these right. 30 years, yeah. nuclear regular standard nuclear power plant, fission 
power plant is the solution. Okay, and now you 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 said you dismissed it rather uh, in a way. A lot of people will be the, the waste disposal problem. You say can be okay. dealt with yucca or we something. We can deal with. Uh, and then we want to move along because you're also based in or you're from Iran. That is correct. And this question is very much in the question now about the Iran that Iranian uh, development of atomic energy. They want to do. Some people say, why do you have to get atomic energy in Iran when you got all that oil? But, and uh, also they're very nervous about anybody who's not uh, part of the already club uh, being able to develop anything to do with atomic energy. We want to get to that. We'll get to yeah. that. Uh, when you look at the, first of all, right now if they decide to make, build nuclear power plant, mm -hmm. who? The United States. Okay, all right. They are uh, standard advanced reactors, mm -hmm. one by GE, one by Westinghouse, that they are approved. You don't make changes to them. Mm -hmm. You buy them as they are, and mm -hmm. they built it. And those are the ones that are advanced that they call them inherently safe reactors. And you work with those yourself? No. No, you do not. I'm sorry. Not yet. Those yeah. are not built here yet. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are the... Uh, the designed but not built. Yeah. The good thing about those is you constantly have to work, work perfectly to make sure that it would not shut itself down. I see. Okay. If you do... It will shut itself it down auto automatically. Uh, that's so like a redundancy. Th that is what they that call it, inherently yeah. safe Yeah, reactors. that's right. Yeah, okay. I see. So, uh, now let's go that's back. That's a systems test. That is a system yeah. that they do a pro and uh, that you think that's a good idea? I good think picture. that is a good idea. Yeah, right. I think that uh, one of the problems that these 103 operating reactors in the United States 103, have okay, uh -huh. is that <coughs> each of them have their own, have their own difference yeah, uh -huh. in building. Yeah. So in another word, they're not too identical. Mm -hmm. They are two very, very similar, mm -hmm. but you don't have identical. You think there should be a standard? I think the standard will help uh -huh. because if you find a problem, you know exactly where that problem is rather than projected on other yeah. model. Uh -huh. And building it is fast. Mm -hmm. and yeah, we can mass produce. And they can uh, build it fast. For the It'd be good to be able to take, uh, we're going to be able to take some of the uh, weapons grade plutonium and whatnot that are in the warheads and use those for driving atomic energy generation. Well, that is so all that I was just going to... Uh, they should have a hose coming from a warhead into a thing that's producing energy and lighting to the countryside. It is. It's psychologically, uh, that would be a great thing for peace. Yes, uh, that would be a very good idea because not only that, even the spent fuel mm -hmm. of the commercial nuclear power plants uh -huh. that are sitting there uh -huh. is an enormous source of energy. It can be concentrated down. It can be... if. They, they, it has quite a bit of energy stored in them. So it can be used? Those can be used, but not in the regular nuclear power plant, in the breeder type of power plant. Uh, how many breeders do we None. have? None. We don't have any? It was a clinch river that during uh, uh, President Carter was canceled. The breeder reactor program the breeder is reactor. down? Yes. Oh, well, I didn't Carter. know that. Oh, I didn't yeah. realize they take the ur uranium 238 and make it 239 uh, plutonium. plutonium and we don't have a breeder reactor no. anywhere in the world? Uh, I think that expand the EBR in England, mm -hmm. expand the breeder reactor. Well, how are they getting all the uranium to operate all these plants then? Here? You no, know, in the world. If they don't have breeder reactors to use uranium, oh, you, you, uranium, you don't create uranium. Uranium uh, comes. You mine uranium at 238. Yeah, but then you have to be an isotope from a breeder then reactor. Then you have to take that U-238 and make it 239. It and enrich it, you make 235. But you, no, you make 239. No, you are saying plutonium, plutonium 239. Plutonium 239 yeah. is created in the power plant from uranium 238. In a breeder reactor? In a br no, in the regular reactor. It is? Chip I thought it. that was a breeder reactor. No, no. Oh, see, in I'm the, ignorant, a, yeah. A, a, the fuel that we put in the reactor yeah. is between two and a half to five percent U-235, uh -huh. brand new. Uh -huh. As it's operating, the rest of it is U-238. Uh -huh. The U-238 gets bombarded by the neutrons. Yeah. 
it becomes plutonium-239. Yes. Some of that plutonium-239 burns in the reactor. Yeah. About one-third of energy is from plutonium in the uh, reactor. Really? Okay. Huh? But the rest of it goes out with the spent fuel. Uh -huh. If you reprocess those and extract that plutonium, uh -huh. then that becomes an excellent source of energy. Okay, good. And I they see. are practically billions and billions of dollars stored in those Yes, pools. indeed, right. Now, I wonder again, one of the problems is, it's so darned interesting, and we could talk for hours on this, I mean, but we want to get to this question about Iran. If about you don't Iran. mind. We've only got about five, ten, 10 minutes left. Okay. Now, this question, because you have a basic understanding, you have contacts, you understand Iran and so forth, Iran now is being seen by many, this question, they were called the act, one of the axes of evil. One of the axes of they're evil, and evil, still And that they're not, a, they're, they're Alibar, uh, uh, Abadi is looking and so forth, about you wanting to develop atomic power and uh, well, the use of atomic, uh, uh, you know, in, in Iran. Uh, w people object to that, about saying you're going to make 30 bombs. years ago, a mm. few years before <coughs> the revolution, yeah. Iran <coughs> started, embarked on a nuclear program. Before the revolution? Before the revolution. The Shah, yeah. And they were building two at Boucher, mm -hmm. and French, German were building two at Boucher, French three on the Karun River uh, in the east, uh, western part. And the United States was pushing very hard so that Iran would buy from U.S. suppliers mm -hmm. nuclear power plant. Mm -hmm. They were pushing for a nuclear power plant? But not only pushing, pushing it, buy it from United States. From which companies? Was it well, Westinghouse? Well, they, they, at that time, they were Westinghouse, Combustion Engineering, so big Backlock contract. and Wilcox, yeah. and General Electric. Yeah, and it was a Those big contract. Yeah. And they and were they forced, uh, they because were Because they thought the Shaw was their ally? Was that, yeah, was it well, uh, that was the idea that no. it was the... Who, uh, built, who built the pl the plant in Iraq that was bombed by the Israelis? Osiric? Yeah. I don't know who okay. built it. Well, it wasn't one of these big uh, commercial types. Uh -huh. it, it was, was more No. Uh, I think it, I don't have much information about that, but was not, uh, I think. They, they preemptively knocked that out because it could become a threat uh, to yeah, maybe but their use of and possession of atomic weapons. Yeah. Right? They, and you know, uh, took a lot of uh, nerve to do, and you know, a lot of people were upset with that. Well, the problem comes in that I saw Mr. R Rumsfeld or somebody was it who said that maybe Israelis could bomb something in Iran if they start developing something that could lead to yeah, uh, challenging the atomic uh, power, uh, the atomic weaponry uh, monopoly of the United States and his allies. Yeah, yeah. but to what end? I don't Let's know. I don't know. I'm First of all, you know, I'm saying that's what's in the popular conscience, don't yeah, you think? It, it yeah. is in the it popular is. thought, but the fact is any action that you do, mm -hmm. You've got to have a clear objective and see what comes after it. We have seen in recent years well, that, the that too many actions have been taken without looking at the consequences. Well, one of the consequences would be that the Muslim world not be able to have atomic weaponry because it's too dangerous for Pakistan them has to it. be responsible for Pakistan it. But they would rather it. they didn't. Than well, it's, not, know, a matter, it's no. not a matter you of Muslim. But you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, There's a reaction to it. And we just had this bombing in London now. And they're saying that the Islamic world is it's, uh, uh, it's all Osama bin Laden. It, no, the problem yeah. is that religion is blown too much out of proportion. I think probably, yeah. Religion neither guides you. Mm -hmm or better, the, the leisure can guide you as well as disguide you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we it have misguide, seen yeah. misguide yeah. you. Yeah. And you can use it as a handicap mm -hmm. to blame everything on. Mm -hmm. But in essence, that cannot be the source of the problem. Right. The source of a problem, if you want to... Is the in imbalance of power in the world perhaps? No, no. no because, no. It, you know... The mentality of, the colonial of colonialism yeah, exactly. must exactly. stop. Uh -huh. Well, it's still there. It right? is it's there. still riding high in the saddle. That is... It's neo-colonialism. Uh, that mentality of colonialism must That we, end. the co colonizers, are civilized. It used to be called white man's burden. 
we will go out and we will we cannot trust the people of the world we can go and intimidate with our power but the other people cannot have because they're like children and they have to be taught I, that kind of thing. That is that is not what's uh, inherently uh, That there? is one of the and main... And that's a problem that, that goes in many, many levels of that the relationship is many, That the is the source of the problems. Of the problem writ large. Uh, at large. Oh. In other words, if you treat people on an equal basis mm -hmm. and take a cooperation approach rather than confrontation approach, mm -hmm. we can solve a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, as long as you draw your sword and you're confronting, and you said, I'm going to kill you, you can't expect the other person to cooperate with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our problem in the world today is the colonial, colonialism and the confrontation. The co confrontation in your face colonialism at the moment. Yes. I mean, it's been neo, it's been neo colonial, just finance and things like that under the service. But we got atomic, we got uh, military bases in 130 countries now. Military bases. And we're walking the world with big, big But boots. also you have to look at something. And they're reacting against us. For 50 years, the United States fought communism. They did. That was the whole raison d'etre of Kennan's uh, policy. Fighting communism was like taking aspirin for an acute uh, cancer. Communism was not something to fight. What the what? cause of communism, which was injustice and poverty, mm -hmm. was to be fought. Uh, both of which can be perhaps in a new kind of way. As we Definitely. get to the point where we can destroy the species, they tell us that now. If the weapons were only, we have the ability to solve the ancient scourges for all the planet within mm -hmm. an ecological context. See, it has not been characteristic yeah, of you history. Got rid and of they will not enunciate policies that allows us to realize mm -hmm. that. You got rid of communism, uh -huh. but you did not get rid of the source, what created communism, mm -hmm. injustice and poverty. Mm -hmm. Now it's prevailing in another form. Mm -hmm. You hit the Osama bin Laden and others, mm -hmm. it will manifest in another form, mm -hmm. unless you attack poverty and injustice. They seem not to be able to adopt. They just had that meeting in Scotland where they, and a huge thing of the people, rock musicians and everything, take care of the poverty problem and they just don't do it. The rich are getting richer the in rich a metaphoric sense in terms of the nations and also the people within the nations, the plutocratic class everywhere. They will not come, the leadership of the mm -hmm. world, political or otherwise, will not come to find some sort of a tapping of this capability of providing for everybody that is a new mm -hmm. possibility that the historically inherited institutions will not allow to come. They're mired in the past. Well, when uh, you look at it is exactly like a drunk that is looking under the street light for his home keys yes. because the alley that he lost it was too dark. Yes, right, right. So yeah. they're looking yeah. at the uh -huh. easy way yeah. to solve a hard problem. This is going to come, we only got a couple minutes left. I'm saying, this is going to become to put, uh, this question of the atomic uh, development of atomic energy capability in the country of Iran is going to become a major issue it's going in to the be time ahead, don't you think? But what do you think is going to happen? Uh, I don't know. It depends mm -hmm. that Iran has not violated any mm -hmm. of the NPT treaty mm -hmm. items. Mm -hmm. It has even gone further than the additional protocol that required. Mm -hmm. The solution that I did, the joint uh, that I proposed, the joint building and operation of a plan mm -hmm. should eliminate any concern that exists concerning the use of the civilian power plant for military purposes. What about the idea that that is a very truncated sovereignty? If the United States has the ability to have atomic weapons that could be dual use, if you, if you take the dual use idea that you can't have it, that might be applied, uh, in particularly in chemical things, there are a lot of chemical processes that could be used and make weapons. That if you take the dual use thing, everybody would have to be stay back in the Stone Age, except the people who are already developed if they don't have the sovereign ability to develop uh, in the same way that the developed countries do. Well, many people have set their mind that Iran is on a path of nuclear power, uh, nuclear weapon. Uh -huh. They have decided that and they want to change. Mm -hmm. For like those, North Korea. For those people, mm -hmm. think about it. And they shouldn't be able to do that because they're not civilized. 
They're not for whatever. Yeah. But, no, but look a, at the 1979. Uh -huh. If Iran had nuclear power plant, uh -huh. would the West encourage Saddam Hussein and provide logistic and money to invade Iran? Mm. Mm. That's a big thing. I never have been able to understand that horrible war. That Why? Yeah. Then you have to look at it that every country goes after its own security. Mm -hmm. No. So those people who claim that Iran is going to build nuclear power, mm -hmm. they should not be arm, able to build nuclear, nuclear arms. Was uh, the in back of their mind they have bombs. so that if you want to do, it could be dual use. Do uh, no, no. no. Oh. In the back of their mind they have it that we want it to be in a way that any time that we want to go there and bomb it or manipulate it, having the ability to do so. I see. I see. Yeah. Whatever happened uh, in the w courts of international law about the bombing of the uh, nuclear reactor in Iraq by Israel? And the notion that some people said, well, we're not going to do it, but maybe Israel could bomb the nuclear facility in Iraq. Where? Was that Rumsfeld said that? Yeah, but the fact mm. is, uh, where? Mm. First of all, that becomes a terrorist activity. Mm. Well, we what the United States is claiming that is fighting terrorism. Mm. Yeah, well, terrorism is being done by everybody on all sides. So, so that would be terrorist activity. Number two, that would be a violation of NPT because one of the NPT requirements is if we're a country we're wants to build, backing away from NTP. They are backing away. Yeah. So, I mean, in other words, it's incoherent policy that is causing the problem. Well, I think the invasion of Iraq was an incoherent well, policy, but there it is yeah. right before us, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. If Iraq was in South Pole, it would have been safe today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I see. Well, these are all issues that I think these are going to be for us. They are going to be for us. And you're in an interesting position because you understand Iran its place in the world, you understand it politically and otherwise. Also, the very important questions about this nuclear question and that sort of thing. And I really thank you for coming in and sharing with me and with the audience some of your perceptions. We should have more programming from you and your colleagues sure. that can help put this in a good light. And I really thank, well, thank you, very you very much, much for participating. It. And you. it's been your pleasure at the perceptions then again. Bayrod. Nakai. 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 He's an, uh, a PhD and a, a nu uh, scientist, nuclear scientist. And we thank you really very much for coming in. You're we ought welcome. to keep tra checking in with one another and keep sure. doing more program. And thanks a lot for coming into oh, Manhattan. You're welcome. Your pleasure to have his perceptions. We invite you to tune in. We're coming back again uh, tomorrow. So do please tune in once again. By thank you really thank very, you much very much for coming in. It. Really good for talking to you. Talk to you. Thank you. That was a good event with Seymour Topping talking. You know, you remember at Columbia? That's yeah. where we first met. And we have to keep in contact with one mm -hmm. another. Maybe you can come over and have some coffee one day and meet our dog. <laughs> and we could talk some about this and more. Because it's a big issue. You're following these things both oh politically yeah, and economically uh, and, and all that. Energy, stuff. political, economic, It's a big issue. It's a big issue. It's a huge issue. And uh, more and more that I have thought endlessly what I said, if that be put into practice, would solve a lot of problems. Well, because when you do joint operation, yeah. uh -huh. no one person can do all he wants. I say, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a safety. That's a that safety. Is a safety that's safety like feature. a redundancy thing. And then you policy. have it uh, uh, to reduce the dependence on uh, fossil fuel. Yeah. That takes pressure from here, and that will solve many of the problems. Mm -hmm. Political. That's economic uh -huh. energy. Yeah, that's right. Energy uh, is going to be crucial to it all. It was interesting. I was thinking that for one hour, what are we going to talk about? No, we will run out of time. We ran out of because there were a lot more that the, my it was. Oh, you could have gone into so much depth and those kind of things. They could each uh, one could have gone yeah, into the, the huge. The, and you've got that's what's good about you is because you have a chapter and verse on all those. You could go on all the details that people have about those things, yeah. and you're thinking yeah. about it in a patterned way. Yeah, that's really looking important. at it, for example, right now you look at it that to fight terrorism. Mm -hmm is to give a person hope. Yeah. I think so, too. To give a person yes, hope. Yes, if we had some vision from our leadership, we wouldn't have these things, uh, you, you know. You need justice. Even, yes. And number two, you need economics. Absolutely. But the engine of economics uh. is energy. Yeah. Without energy, there yeah. is no economics. That's right. And, and even and if you have a vision to something, even if you're not going to achieve it right away, at least you have a vision of somewhere where we're going. The, our leadership doesn't give us no, that vision at all uh, that I can see. Uh, it's going to have to come from public access. They or lost a great opportunity mm. at this time. Now, 
I usually don't like to go to an area which is not my area, but mm. when you talk about axis of evil, mm -hmm. when they were talking, bringing different clans from Afghanistan yeah. in Europe, mm. in Germany, 